Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the meeting will be starting in five minutes. Thank you very much.
developer in Visaya. Best developer in Mindanao goes to... Cebu Landmaster Singh surpassed our judges' expectations. Give them also the best that they really truly deserve. The homes are based on what they could afford. Put premium in it. When we turn over project, we're just really there. We're not ever going to go away. So good afternoon, um, everyone, to the 100 participants joining us in the call today. Uh, before we begin, let me give a few reminders. So a copy of the presentation will be um, available at our company's website at ir.cbunmasters.com. And same with our previous um, brief online briefings before, participants will be kept on mute as we are in a webinar format. And for any questions, you may type them in the Q&A box provided at the bottom of your screens. For, uh, these will be addressed during the Q&A uh, session. And lastly, the briefing will be recorded and will be uploaded as well as in our company's website. So without any further ado, let me call on our Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Um, Jose Franco Soberano, to start with the brief. Hi, um, good afternoon everyone. We normally have our uh, briefings uh, in the morning. Uh, so we just had a board meeting to attend um, this morning, uh, but it's really our pleasure to be meeting you again. Um, the last time we met was in person um, in Manila. As promised, we hope to be there more often to also share our news and, and thankfully and Consistently, it's been good news uh, the past few years, uh, and today is no exception. Can you um, allow me to share my um, video? Okay. So in the first half, uh, which is still um, still with challenges present, but it's really CLI taking advantage of the opportunities we have here. Uh, we continue to grow at a strong pace, and we registered a 32% growth in our consolidated NIAT, um, in, which increased uh, to over 2 billion already. While our parent grew healthily uh, from 1.55 billion to 1.68 billion. This is really, really driven by a very strong um, growth in revenue, um, growth across all our segments, including the premium, middle market, and affordable segments. A 23% growth in the first half of 2023. So that's easy for me to remember. Um, so from 7.46 billion in the first half last year, we were able to register 9.15 billion in the first half of, of this year. And as Grant always loves to point out, um, the in realized revenue keeps on growing. These are revenue that are locked in that will reflect in our books as completions and, and collections uh, take place. Another very important indicator is a leading indicator of our future sales, which is reservation sales. And this is where I really applaud my team, I applaud the organization, because this first half is really our highest um, sales performance in our history, now 10.5 billion in six months, a growth of 36% from our previous half. And across all our inventory, we're 90% sold. So, so what does this tell me? I need to find more projects so it's good news definitely to our shareholders and to the market in general. No? Um, we, we want our, our example to, to really uh, excite the market or inspire other players as well. So our assets have grown now to 93 billion. 
Um, so this is really more than 15-fold already from our IPO uh, days. Um, this year, we've stayed true to our commitment to help the housing industry or the market. We are launching 13.5 billion in new projects, um, higher than the 8.3 billion that we did in the first half last year. Um, we are very bullish still about this mint. While we announced our plans to expand in Luzon, coincidentally, I was in Luzon just yesterday um, in Kamsur. We are still very, very bullish about the Visayas Mindanao. We recently acquired a very nice piece of property in General Santos City. So with that, uh, with our uh, proudly our CFO of the year beside me here, who will take us through our financial results. So Grant, please take it away. Yeah, thank you, Franco. So as uh, my partner Franco has uh, very uh, ably already set me up for this one, I'm really proud to share the numbers behind um, our performance uh, in the first half of uh, 2023. So here you could, um, uh, our uh, our results are still driven, of course, by the sale of our uh, real estate. So it's really our turnaround business of uh, selling homes as well as office spaces uh, to a smaller degree, but mostly really it's house and lots and homes. And through the continued uh, progress completion of those projects that we have substantially sold out using a percentage of completion method, we we're able to recognize this 9 billion pesos worth of revenue. So that's a 22% growth uh, year on year. And uh, as, as we keep reiterating, this is of course a lagging indicator. This is simply a recognition of sales that we have closed with our buyers some periods ago, and we are just now proportionately and progressively recognizing these revenues. But across our other business segments, whether it be hospitality, leasing, and even management fees that encompasses our property management uh, business, um, they are all up and they're growing. Um, you should, I will uh, just add it here, and I know Franco will expound on this later, that in the next 12 to 18 months, you, you will see some significant improvements in these numbers as we start opening up more of these recurring income assets to operations. So right now, um, later we'll update you on how these operational assets are coming along in terms of getting online, getting ready. But these are, uh, these are things and these are seedlings we have planted several years ago and we're, we're starting to, we're, uh, we're going to start seeing uh, the real results and operational results contribute to our numbers um, within this year. We've managed to grow our uh, revenues uh, uh, while maintaining our margin, in fact, improving our margin slightly. So if you look at how we were able to drive that growth, you could see that we, we maintain or in fact improve um, our operating margins on gross EBITDA and net income margin um, compared to last year. Um, we have been saying that there will be challenges uh, in terms of uh, some headwinds that might that will exert and uh, that will exert some downward pressure on our margins with inflationary numbers as well as higher interest costs and we maintain that this is still a risk that we are actively managing that um, but we should see uh, a very stable type of margins in the in the quarters to come operating expenses and other expenses are pretty much in line with uh, what we expected and that leads ultimately to a bottom line or a growth to the CLI group of 32% on a consolidated basis. And uh, the net income attributable to the parent of the shareholders uh, uh, clocks in at 1.683 billion or a 9% growth year on year from the same period. This growth is driven, as I mentioned earlier, by the continued delivery of uh, percentage of completion progress of our projects. So you could see uh, here we're pretty much on track to once again uh, outperform our numbers from last year. So um, the shades here indicate uh, the performance metrics per quarter. So from the same period last year when we achieved this kind of revenues in the first, uh, in the first and second quarter, 
um, we have uh, already gr grown by 23% year on year for the same period. And we have done this um, while still on a net basis increasing our reservation sales. So if you think about my unrealized revenue as uh, what I have in the back or baon kumbaga or uh, revenues that I'm warehousing for future recognition, um, at the same time that we are harvesting and taking out record-breaking revenue numbers in the first half of 2023, in fact, the net amount has grown, although not as much already. Again, this represents because we're coming from very high bases as we go up like this. And you could see that our revenue contributions are becoming more diversified um, as we spread it across not only a market segment, you could see that um, it is our uh, premier masters, garden series, and economic housing sector, all contributing more, <laughs> more or less at the same rate. So um, it's a very well balanced portfolio um, coming from all business sectors. It does show that the recovery in real estate um, in the markets where we're operating is very broad based. And these revenues are coming from jurisdictions uh, outside of uh, Cebu already. So um, not only have we diversified across market segments, but also across geographies. A very important leading indicator, of course, is our reservation sales. Or just to remind, uh, reservation sales are the actual value of the contracts that we close with our buyers in the first half of 2023. So most of this 10 billion pesos, 10.5, uh, 539 billion pesos worth of contracts that we have closed are contracts that are not yet contributing to our revenues. Um, collections have only begun and only started on these contracts. So this basically adds to my warehouse revenue that I will be recognizing uh, in the next few years. Um, here, and this is a matter of time, you could see that there's still strong contributions across the board. But in this period, it was our Casamira brand or our flagship affordable housing brand that really sold and moved well. Um, just breaking down a little bit of nuance as well, um, that's not on this slide. A lot of the sales that transpired were actually also from uh, launches and inventories that we had uh, since last year. So what this means is that there was a lot of pent up demand in locations where we launched our projects, but only materialized uh, as reservation sales this year. And so we're ha that will you know, that, that will drive the long-term sellout rate of our projects. Uh, these sales numbers are uh, coming very diversified across Visayas and Mindanao where we operate. And of course, our Palawan project is contributing quite significantly. Already. Our balance sheet uh, continues to be healthy and um, continues to be what I feel uh, very prudently managed. Although, um, some might note that we have uh, been leveraging our balance sheet. That leverage has always been accompanied by future collections. So it's the best kind of assets. It, these are assets that are on their way to be monetized and liquidated. So if I can draw your attention here, if you look at uh, the box is sorry, the box is offset incorrectly. But if you look at the receivables right here, it's at 2.78 billion. Contract assets are at 38.8 billion. These are essentially contract assets are a type of receivables that are not yet due. That's how they're defined um, according to our accounting standards. So if I add both of that, um, if I add both of that, I already have close to 59 billion pesos worth of collections on my balance sheet. Then if I add the 29 billion pesos worth of unrecognized revenues. Remember when I mentioned that we had unrecognized revenues worth 29 billion, not yet in our financial statements. So if you add all three of these numbers, all three of the, the, all these, these represent the uncollected value for now of the contracts we have secured. Um, they make up uh, these contracts are made up of about and I, I know I count this every day you know every week we monitor this this is across uh, approximately 34,000 live buyer contracts 
all in different stages of collections, all across projects in different stages of delivery. So if you add that, that is close to 80 billion pesos worth of contract sales that we will deliver on in the next few years. So compared to the other side of our ledger of our, our liabilities and our payables, um, representing how much we have levered our balance sheet, how much we've drawn from our bank lines in order to finish the projects, as well as our pending payables in order to finish those projects, we are more than covered. And this is what I meant by um, we are sitting on a balance sheet that can come where you can comfortably see you know, how every side of the a balance sheet obligation can be met and addressed very comfortably. Um, I wanted to highlight our uh, debt maturity profile and how we're managing this. So in the last uh, couple of rounds, we have uh, uh, periods, so, so to speak, um, we have uh, gone on capital raising exercises and uh, this is the result of it where we have actually we, we've managed the, our debt maturity towers such that we're pushing them uh, a little bit on the longer end of the curve and right now with uh, cost of debt going up um, we are uh, any debt measures that we are looking at will have a very strong element of a liability management exercise and what i mean by this is with the yield curve inverting um, for a high capital expenditure project, uh, high capital expenditure company like real estate that requires capital, it probably now makes a lot more sense. We're essentially being compensated to borrow at longer rates rather than keep them short. So um, these are strategies that we are, uh, we are considering in the company to optimize our capital structure. Um, now for the business updates, as well as updates on our uh, operations, I'll turn you back over to my colleague, Franco. Yep. Thank you again, Grant. Okay. So I'd like to report that our land bank, while we're launching um, 15 projects a year on average, we're able to really replenish uh, and grow our quality land bank. Uh, the newest member of the land bank is a acquisition in General Santos City. Uh, we see a lot of progress. We see a lot of um, of, of uh, good demand supply dynamics um, in that city. You can also see here that um, uh, a lot of our land bank is a mix of horizontal and four vertical projects. 63% um, horizontal, 37% vertical. So the vertical uh, land bank are really located in the prime um, urban areas here. Next slide. So um, as reported earlier, uh, we are targeting uh, 13 uh, billion in CAPEX for this year. So far, uh, we've utilized around 5 billion, uh, but we are really geared up to utilize up to 13 billion. 78% uh, of that uh, in residential development, 11.8 in lot, lot acquisition, 9.2 in investment property. Thanks. Um, so this is a source of pride for us every time we show this, knowing uh, where we're coming from. But we're already approaching around 115 uh, projects in our portfolio, uh, comprising 86 residential, uh, six offices, 10 hotels, 10 mixed use, and three townships. So I'll update you on each um, business segment. Next slide. This is an important stat here. Um, across our 34,000 units, we're 90% sold out, which is a very uh, strong indicator, not just of new launches, right? Um, uh, in real estate, for those really monitoring the industry, um, even when the projects are finished, you might see a lot of inventory, but this is where CLI does a very good job of really cleaning out its inventory um, as, as projects mature. Uh, next slide. So this is that slide where we now have over 36,913 units grant from R34 uh, that we reported in the last uh, half. Um, and we are 90% sold out, 
sold, which includes the completed project. So this is what I want to highlight. Um, where, where CLI is good at is really, I would say, uh, supporting the project until it's finished. Um, this is where we're able to turn around because all our completed projects are really at the 98% rate. Even those that we are still constructing, whether this is the second year of construction or about to turn over, we are on average 94% sold. And that is that shows um, uh, an investor uh, about uh, how well we followed through, followed through on our projects. And even those that we recently launched just as the last one year, from 2022 to early 2023, already 71% sold. Actually, we can report to you what we've achieved in the first few months of the second half. We already disclosed that a project of ours of Davao sold out in just one week. Uh, so we sold over 2.5 billion in one week. So this would immediately increase the percentages here you know, uh, as we move towards the second half. So total sales value, bringing to our economy and market over 102 billion in real estate value. So just a quick um, update or breakdown, next. So these were the recent launches, still very Bismin dominated, and why not? <laughs> uh, why not because um, it's, it's a market that's developing. I've, I've always asked why here, it's, it's a market where you have a good combination of reasonably priced land in well-located areas uh, with a population that is um, increasing in purchasing power, plus an OFW market that is resurging, that is resurgent. So these are actual performances sold out in Palawan, um, the Cali 104, the Davao project, and, and, and uh, this really, um, it's good news to our shareholders and, and even our buyers no? um, uh, who, who we work hard for. Next slide. Okay. So the construction in progress are very um, exciting as well. Exciting because uh, as we speak, there are probably 15 projects where I have different completions, uh, sources of what we call loan takeouts or, or balances to collect but they are already 90 to 100% done in construction. So namely, 38 Park Avenue here, um, we are already turning over up to 26th floor. Uh, Casamira Iloilo, we just started turning over um, two months ago. So I think we have 20 houses that we already delivered. So this is a fast project. We just started this in 2020. Uh, Mesa Vira and Bacolod, we held a blessing ceremony there, which I personally attended. So we've turned over the first two towers already. Um, so this gives CI, CLI that confidence, not just um, in sales, but also in, in cash conversion and uh, in, in cash flow management, because we are completing a lot of projects, uh, a lot of sold out projects. Next slide. Okay, and as I mentioned, the completed projects are uh, growing in size and quality as well. So uh, to name a few, these are some of our completed projects. Next slide. We we're going to move to our recurring income business, which we basically just started six years ago. Um, just after our IPO, we made a strategic move to, uh, to, to aim for a long-term uh, sustainability. So that's by adding a recurring income portfolio, which now includes about 30,000 of completed uh, spaces, leasable, net leasable spaces, which will grow to 200,000 with what we're doing under construction and in the pipeline. Uh, what's important to note um, are, is the leasing growth. No? We've, we're growing 41% um, in leasing revenue with our new retail areas coming online and taken up by, by tenants. Next slide. So we're quite excited for the coming months. Uh, we are completing projects where we have our major retail portfolios. Uh, Astra Lifestyle Mall, which is uh, in the heart of Mandawe and Patria in downtown will really boost our uh, retail, our mall portfolio. Uh, so we will see this uh, 
going up there, uh, including our carefully curated list of tenants. Next slide. Yeah, a little bit of uh, good news also. Uh, Cebu Land Masters delivered Cebu City's uh, first five-star bird death certified building. Uh, there's already another five-star bird death building in Mandawe, but we're the first to claim it in Cebu City uh, with our project, the Latitude Corporate Center. Um, so we're very proud to be working with the Philippine uh, Green Building Council here, and, and hopefully it will inspire more developers to embrace um, sustainability. Not just talk about it, but really do something about it. Next slide. Hotels. So this is probably for, for a lot of the business travelers here attending. You know the market is so busy. You know flight disruptions or even so, uh, fully booked hotels. And it reflects in our results, actually. 74% growth in revenues. So while these guys were the ones really badly affected during the pandemic, these are the guys now smiling. Uh, I have my hotel manager, every time I visit him, he's smiling at me. Uh, we're, I think in, in July, in Cebu, in our, in our Ascot property, we were more than 90% occupied on, on average. So this is a good indicator. But what's even better for CLI is, next slide, we have three properties coming online uh, this year. And it, so with the PAD, our co-living brand, Citadines, Bacolod, and Life. So hopefully, um, we are opening these in the last quarter and, and will contribute immediately to our hotel uh, performance. And this will be followed by um, our other showcase brands, our first property with the Radisson Group, with Radisson Red next year, Citadines uh, Davao, actually next year, Mercure Hotel also next year, and then you will have our uh, jewel properties with Abaca and Sofitel in 2025. So um, collectively, over almost 2,000 keys and one of the best hotel portfolios under a single developer in, in our region. Next slide. Of course, our townships. So you know CLI has entered uh, this arena of townships. Next slide. Just showing you some uh, milestones. So this is a photo, a recent photo of our Davao Global Township. Uh, highly celebrated township in Davao, uh, catering to the largest uh, residential area and, and downtown area of Davao in Matina. It's where there is a very popular night market and we're building the first uh, mall components here. Um, and this was awarded as the best township in Asia just two years ago. And, and we are pressured to really deliver as promised here. And next slide, we inaugurated the township just last uh, May, uh, uh, attended by our uh, former president and, and senator and, and top officials of the city who are very proud. Uh, and it's a uh, Cebuano company that was able to uh, help realize this with our partners from Davao, or the Villa Brila clan. So please visit. Uh, I'll just take, go straight to significant milestones and I'll let Grant handle most of the Q&A here. Sure. Um, uh, another good indicator are there are really untapped markets, even in Cebu. So CLI was able to launch a 6.8 hectare property in the city of Danao, in the very um, in the industrial city of Danao that is really uh, becoming more mixed use, is attracting a lot of um, investors. So. Uh, just a month after launching, we, we are already 90% sold there uh, with over uh, 600 housing units. So this is where as a developer uh, in this region, there are still untapped areas no, in, in cities, even like Cebu. Next slide. This is a project close to our hearts. This is a uh, actually a tenement condominium as part of our socialized compli housing compliance, we made a direct investment route that allowed us to build 90 units for informal centers displaced by a fire in Mandawa City. And look how uh, nice that looks. It doesn't look like a home for you know, low-income families. It looks like a decent home that they deserve. Uh, and it's even going to have a green building certification. And, and this is done by Cibulan Masters uh, in, in 
uh, for the city of Mandawe and for the hardworking and, and deserving Mandawe Hanons. We are going to finish this this year. Excited. Uh, so strengthening this men leadership, uh, we announced our Mindara Davao, uh, and we already disclosed that this sold out already in just uh, one week. Uh, we have our Belmira Heights Davao upcoming. We are in the final steps of securing the necessary permits. Same as our Kosamir and Maktan, we are in the uh, final steps of steering permits here, uh, East Village as well, and, and new housing expansion in Casimira South and a, another new untapped area of consolation in Cebu. Uh, and this will be a new um, significant housing project in Del Miro uh, Consolation. Next slide. Of course, um, our CFO here received on behalf of the company uh, our, our award as one of the top 10 developers in the country. I believe it was our fifth straight year to be part of this distinguished list. And we won a bronze uh, 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 award for achievement in corporate social responsibility. So um, at this point, uh, once again, I'd like to thank um, our team first and foremost for the uh, excellent results we are really riding a strong momentum that we want to, that we are carrying into the second half. And we hope to do our next briefing in Manila. So that should be by November. November, November. or if not November, we, you know, for sure our full year, yeah. when we do our full year once and we have that significance. So it can be a November briefing with a advanced Christmas party for possibly. our analysts yeah, possibly. in Manila. Yeah, And so, we have uh, some big things lined up. I really, we can't speak too much about it now, but okay. I think the market will appreciate uh, the things that we are already working on, not only on, of course, not only on our business operations, but also on our overall our, our corporate strategy. Yeah, uh, which we will update soon as these uh, materialize. Uh, once again, we're very thankful for the support. Uh, we're honored to be delivering consistently good results to you, our shareholders. So thank you very much. And we're now open for your questions. Uh, thank you, Sir Franklin. Uh, Sir Grant, uh, we have a couple of questions here in the mm -hmm. Q&A box. Um, I'll read this first question. Um, I think this is for Sir Grant mm -hmm. uh, from John Ruel Prado. Do you think um, our stock price is still undervalued? Uh, will there be any buyback program to boost the price? Up? Yeah, thanks for the question, John. But um, you know, when they say you never ask your barber if you need a haircut, you also don't ask your CFO if the stock is undervalued because I will always say yes. <laughs> no, but joking aside, um, I think I'm being very objective when I say that we are very undervalued. Uh, despite, I mean, operationally on the ground, I think both on the fundamentals as well as just the returns that we are driving for the market. Um, we do believe that uh, we are undervalued in the market. You think about it, we are number one market share in Visayas and Mindanao. We have gained this market share as we've grown. We've not only gained the market share, but we gained market share by growing, of a growing pie. So the, the demand is continues to be very strong. It has proven to be strong during the pandemic. We are expanding and diversifying our real estate offering in our portfolio. We're, uh, again, as Franco mentioned, we're soon to launch more hospitality projects, more office projects. We continue to deliver products and uh, that does outstanding results. And these products are uh, the, what the market is snapping up. Again, on average, Franco mentioned that we're 90% sold out. But I think a more significant measure there is on average, uh, as soon as the project is completed or as the projects mature to completion, we're 98% sold out. So the 90% is a blended average, but as more of our projects become completed, as more buyers see the products we are bringing to the market, you could actually see, uh, you, we're actually seeing very strong uh, set uh, sales take up numbers. So we know our inventory will get sold out. We're paying out cash dividends, we're growing double digits of compounded annually, yet our, uh, you know, our valuation and earnings is less than, at this point, less than 4 XPE. We're trading below book. So obviously, if I were an analyst, just on the fundamental basis, I would say that we're very much undervalued. 
Um, and you don't, I don't even have to just say it myself. If, um, this is a conversation I've had many, many times with uh, many analysts and researchers covering us. So yes, I, I do believe we are. Uh, the second part of your question is, is there a buyback program uh, to boost uh, the price up? We've had buyback programs already, I think three um, in the last, uh, in the recent years. And even the founding shareholders have uh, bought back a significant amount of shares. Um, this is all publicly disclosed, of course. We just have to balance um, the results because we might inadvertently not even cause the price to go up because one of the things that we, we want to do is we want to enhance trading liquidity and volume trading in our stock because that is one absolutely one of the factors that investors are asking us to take note of. So um, just as, in, as an advanced answer to a next question, um, it is one of the things um, we are working on in terms of how we can foster a more active trading environment for our stock that allows our investors the proper environment to take an entry position and take an exit position should they want to so that our valuation can finally uh, be realized or where I feel we should be. Thanks for the question. Thank you for that, um, Sir Grant. Um, for the next question, let me read uh, this question from Rusty Mercado. Uh, he is uh, the uh, head of research in China Bank Security. Mm. Hi, Rusty. By the way, uh, thank you for the coverage. So they, they just recently covered uh, Civilian Masters. So, um, on the saying, what is the total GLA you're expecting by the end of the year? And uh, related to that, what is the occupancy rate of your existing portfolio as of end of quarter two? Yeah, um, thank you. On the leasing, uh, currently uh, we're at just over 30,000 in net leasable area, uh, but we are expecting uh, to reach 40 plus 47,000, um, so around 77,000 um, in six months' time. Uh, Retail-wise, we are uh, in above 90% uh, for, for retail leasing, for office leasing. Uh, we are mirroring you know, the market. No? We, we know that um, vacancy rates are still hovering over 20%, and so that's where CLI is as well. Uh, but um, the good news uh, for office leasing is uh, there is really renewed interest. Uh, there is stronger um, uh, interest because we see some new uh, BPO players uh, who took floors in our buildings. So I think it's about time where um, the work from home threat will be overridden by the need to have secure um, office facilities uh, which will pre prevent any data privacy concerns. I think that's always the concern with big BPOs. Uh, they realize that um, uh, having people work from home to do key transactions will always be a threat. So we see renewed interest in office buildings, but I would really point out that the newer office buildings will be taken up taken up first you know, because they will offer the greener facilities with uh, uh, more technological provisions. Captured it correctly. There's a second part of the question that I think I, I'll take on now. Um, uh, Clark, do you want to, uh, could you help me read for our audience? Okay, so um, also from our team, sir, on gearing, uh, given your gearing ratio, mm -hmm. our remaining CapEx program and long-term plans are there any developments and potential capital raising exercises to help fund future growth? Uh, the quick answer is absolutely yes. Um, I wish I could give a longer answer, but suffice it to say that um, we are working diligently, ex not only exploring our options, but working on those options already. And um, the, the hope is that um, we can get to a point um, in this process where we can disclose something to the public. Um, of course, um, when we, we work on something like this, um, we need to be sure about uh, what are not only our intention, but also uh, if we announce anything, it should be uh, a little bit more definitive. So the quick answer is yes. But I guess to give a preview or some idea, um, there are many ways by which uh, we can address uh, this matter. Um, uh, 
you, it's a capital intensive industry and one way to get capital for example um, is to partner with institutions or entities um, that can infuse land um, into our projects so that's a non-cash uh, move um, another is to invite uh, private investments into the company um, and bring in their investments as as equity and finally i think i've been very transparent about this third one is that we do have medium and long-term plans to eventually uh, do a read of our own that might be i know that's something that's been asked before but that is absolutely something that that has a tremendous effect on our balance sheet so um, we we were simply executing this in order what we know we need to do is we need to have a good operating track record of any recurring income assets that we wish to spin off into a REIT and therefore get and recycle back the capital to CLI as equity. So first things first, we want to launch and deliver these units. We want to perfect and learn from these operations. We want to give a good operating track record, show you occupancy rates, show you average daily room rates for our hospitality assets, and then uh, start laying the groundwork for a REIT and hopefully, again, within three or four years' time, uh, that, will, that will happen. And given the cycle of real estate, right, um, from acquisition to turnover of a real estate project development, it's a multi-year cycle. Um, this is, at least from our time perspective, it's going to happen pretty soon. Um, so we're very clear with our intentions uh, in, terms of, in terms of time as well. But we also know what needs to be done in order to maximize the value for CLI and shareholders. Yeah, um, well answered by Grant. And um, so that was a definite yes on our capital raising activities. And once there are definitive um, developments, we will uh, announce immediately on that one. Uh, thank you for that, sir. Uh, Especially, um, y y I think, for the analysts or for uh, real estate players there um, tuning in. I believe CLI has earned that um, earned that place uh, in in its leadership in our region. So of course, um, groups have taken notice. Um, groups understand that we've delivered on 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 results that are unprecedented, you know, growing during the pandemic. So I, I feel it's really uh, about time, and and definitely it's something where. Management in our CLI, especially our chairman and CEO, Mr. Joe Sobrano, is always you know, a step ahead, always looking forward to grow the company the best way possible uh, with this years of experience, especially with our very diligent board uh, who is guiding us uh, along the way. So thank you for, for that very good question. And on the second question on residential launches, at the start of the year, we announced that we were launching 29 billion of residential sales. But we've launched just close to, um, I would say, 13.5 so far, of which uh, we sold 10 billion uh, with the new launches and, and, and some existing projects. So from 13.5, I have 16 billion uh, of launches to go. So keep me busy and my team busy. Uh, uh, and just to remind the audience, it's our 20th year. So we are really coming out swinging as we celebrate our 20th year uh, this September. On Luzon strategy, maybe you can yeah. ask a question. Um, another question from Resting Sir on Luzon strategy. Are there any new updates in your upcoming mainland Luzon? Yeah, uh, I just arrived from Luzon yesterday, took a day trip. Uh, we were in Kamsur in, in Naga City. Uh, so we were, we were looking at several very good um, opportunities. Uh, we really like uh, Kamsur. Uh, and, and once we have something definitive, we will announce it. Uh, as you know, CLI moves very fast. Uh, we are really hoping to launch our first Luzon project. Launch meaning bring to market by next early next year. Thank you, uh, thank you sir. There's an interesting question here from interesting. Uh, Gaylord Tingzon. So mm -hmm. um, he is asking if we are planning to develop a township in Jensan and where is it located exactly? Yeah, good Good thing I know who this guy is. Uh, he's from the brokerage community. Uh, I know he's excited for us to be in Jensan. Uh, it's going to be a housing development. We're bringing our award-winning Casamira brand to Jensan. So it's just uh, around 15 hectares approximately. So that's over 1,000 plus units to be brought to Jensan. 
Um, maybe you can provide insights or from why we chose Jensen from other from the among the other sites. Yeah, I mean Jensen. We've been wanting to be in Jensen since uh, 2019. There are just a combination of factors. Uh, uh, you know, we're very strict about our due diligence process. So if there's one thing wrong with a property, we you don't we won't push for it. But I would say it has very strong uh, local economy. Um, of course, from the agri to the poultry uh, to the food uh, businesses there, and they they are moving. Um, uh, you know, uh, these outside the city, they are really emerging. Uh, you have a lot of big malls there. Um, there are no, not so many condos yet there, no? maybe one or two, but when, we, when CLI will position ourselves there, so we, we are ready to help uh, urbanize the city as well. The, the, what's great is their good governance. You know, the, they have an investment promotion team from the LGU who was just here in our office. And, I, should, I was yeah, about to say that, in yeah, fact, that yeah. they came to visit us, so that yeah. delegation came to us uh, here in Cebu to essentially be proactive and entice our investment there. Yeah. So we know that uh, it is an environment, it is, uh, or they're, they're laying the groundwork for an environment that is conducive for you know, economic development starting yeah. from housing. Yeah, a business friendly LGU um, uh, will, will always be a plus, right? Because mm -hmm. we have the same shared goal, wanting to help them with their uh, uh, tax revenues, uh, also help them with their employment. So it's always win-win. And, and, and there are several uh, very good LGUs out there. The last question for you. Okay. So that's all for today. Yeah. We have a total of 83 participants. Okay. So we're on, on, on behalf of the team and Franco, I, uh, I want to thank everyone who attended this call. So it's just the first half. I uh, thank you for uh, monitoring and keeping track of CLI. I'm actually very excited for the second half because uh, God willing, we'll have some very significant announcements to make. Again, uh, I, I'm actually, I'm personally quite giddy and uh, uh, we're working very hard in the background to do this. Some of these questions I couldn't address or I couldn't give much more details, but just know that your team, uh, your management, of this hard at work not only to execute the strategies we have laid out to deliver on the projects that are already fully sold but also to address all those concerns um, that are facing us uh, uh, and our and, and your company and we know exactly you know how we're going to do it and uh, these are these are things that we look forward to sharing with you uh, but in the next few months this year thank you very much for following CLA. that's well said by grant i'll also end here thank you so much it's our honor to be uh um, sharing our good news to you. Have a great afternoon. Okay.